So was it a clash of egos, clash of personalities? What actually happened? Why did one of the most popular newscasts in the country let their anchor go? I'm Adrian Batra. With me is Brian Lilly. Of course, we are referring to Lisa Laflamme, now the former anchor of CTV National News. Brian, you have put out some information that the public wasn't aware of before. I am so, so still firmly of the belief we're never going to know the entire story, but there are some details that you have learned from current former employees of CTV of what really went on. Yeah, what, what, what was interesting about this is shortly after, like within hours of Lisa Laflamme announcing on uh, social media that she was gone. And let's be blunt, she announced this before the network. She put out a video on her own social media channels and said, I'm gone. I was blindsided. I didn't see this coming. I thought at 58, I still had years to go. Well done piece. But, you know, compared to the slick studio quality that we're used to seeing Lisa LaFlamme on, it was a bit like a hostage video. She's away at her <laughs> cottage somewhere. Uh, and I was looking to see, is she blinking out Morris code for us to learn more? Well, she wasn't, but within hours, people started to come forward and say, you know, it was a bit of a whisper campaign. Well, Lisa LaFlamme was toxic. Lisa LaFlamme and her senior executive producer, Rosa Wang, uh, ran a, a horrible uh, newsroom operation. And so I said, OK, well, let's look into this. We've heard about these sorts of things in the media before. You and I have worked all over the media in the past. We know that there can be a lot of egos. There can be people who are, are poisonous. What I found was people who felt that Lisa Laflamme and her, and, and her sidekick, the executive producer, right hand, whatever you want to call her, Rosa Wine, uh, that they were tough. But I also found defenders who said, well, yeah, she was tough. She was demanding. But what do you expect? It's, it's the number one uh, news show. It's the number one newscast in the country. And for people that say this doesn't matter, it takes a lot of work to get 1.2 million Canadians to watch anything, never mind a news show, at 11 p.m., but that's what they were doing regularly, 1 million to 1.2 million people watching this show. So none of it quite made sense. Um, started to hear about the toxic thing. As I said, had defenders who said, no, that's not the case. And they wanted to put it on Michael Melling, who is a new executive, new VP of news at Bell Media. So there were two camps. Those who said it's this, this guy who some have called sexist and ageist. And, and and horrible, and he couldn't ha handle women standing up to him, uh, versus those who said, no, this was all Lisa Laflamme. She brought it on herself. Adrian, I don't really think either of those are fully true. Tell the whole story. Maybe he is sexist, but he also promoted a bunch of women, so that would kind of undermine that. Um, if so, the, so there's so many varying threads and narratives mm. when it comes to a story like this, because you know what they say about a vacuum, you know, so it has to be filled somehow. So everyone's going to fill it with speculation. Everyone's going to fill it with various accusations and charges about who did what to whom and how so-and-so was acting and, and what, the, what, what the reality is, is from some shades of gray somewhere in between. Um, and as I said, right at the, at, the, at the beginning, I don't think that we're actually ever going to get the full story. So now we have a situation where Lisa Laflamme's video, um, her talking about how she was blindsided by the company when she was let go and on, on or told she was being let go on June 29th, yet then she still covered um, the Pope when he was in Canada, that which was after the fact. But nonetheless, I, I think all of these varying narratives out there um, is problematic because uh for the very reason that you just mentioned the accusation against the executive is that he is ageist sexist doing all these things yet you and i both know and have reported on it two of the flagship properties for bell cp24 and, and cfto uh, and ctv toronto and ctv news channel and bnn melling promoted two women to go in or wanted yeah. to promote one to another anyway there's two women running those operations. So that kind of pierces that bit of the narrative, well, but it and, still and then doesn't on, on, on explain the a side, lot. On the toxic yeah. side, Adrian, you know, part of the uh, friction apparently between Melling and Laflamme is that he wanted to take Rosa Wang, her longtime executive producer, and 
put her in what some considered an emotion, but when you look at the numbers, he wanted to put her in charge of CP24, which is massive, huge revenue stream for Bell Media. He wanted to put her in charge of BNM Bloomberg and other parts of the large Toronto news operation. So if she was so toxic, he wouldn't want to move her. So I'm having trouble with either of these clean, cut and dry narratives that different camps want to push. I think that there is a lot of complex things going on under there. I think there was a clash of egos. I think that Laflamme La likely felt that, well, I'm the chief anchor. I'm the one in charge. The senior vice president of news felt, no, I'm the one in charge. Uh, and in the end, he ended up winning. And my guess is backed up by the senior executives at Bell mm -hmm. and Bell Media, um, who you know had reasons that, you know, not to back Laflamme like they, they might have in the past. As you say, we're not going to know the full story. And I think there's lots of blame to go around, as there often is in these things. People let's just talk about, not getting along. Let's talk about another aspect that you touched on. And it had to do with a recent lawsuit that was settled on a story that all of our readers and subscribers know very well, uh, details inside and out. And that was the infamous takedown of then leader of the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario, Patrick Brown, now mayor of Brampton. There is a very close connection with Lisa Laflamme in that story as well. I'm not going to do it justice. So what is the, what is the history there? Well, that story uh, broke on CTV National News. It did not break on a local supper hour newscast in Ontario, even though it was the Ontario leader. It didn't break on CFTO, Toronto's uh, CTV affiliate. It broke on the CTV National News. That's because it, it originated out of the Parliament Hill Bureau. It was taken to La Flamme. Every person that I've talked to, uh, from people who were on the Hill, people who worked on the story, people who were just in the newsroom that day, say that La Flamme was intimately involved in developing that story, crafting the story, and getting it to air. That story ended up leading to a very costly law uh, suit. No, they didn't end up paying Patrick Brown the $8 million he was asking for, but there were a lot of legal fees. There was embarrassment for Bell Media. And you know, I would not be surprised to find out that uh, Patrick Brown never paid his own lawyer. I can't say that for sure, uh, but I have heard that, yeah, you know, we don't know the whole story on, on what happened there. Nobody's willing to talk. There's a non-disclosure agreement, but something happened. It cost a lot. And now uh, Wendy Freeman, who was the head of news, she was replaced last December or, or, or told, uh, announced that she was leaving last December. Melling came in in January. The lawsuit was settled in March, I believe. And, and now Laflamme is out. Again, is that the whole reason? No. It's part of why I think, though, that there was a, a confluence of reasons, a, a lot of things going on. And previously, there was a Bell executive going back to 2015 who was shown the door after instructions he gave to the newsroom were leaked out. And you know, the reporting that I have is that uh, a lot of the complaints came from the CTV national news operation. And so you know, if you're a Bell executive and you've seen them, um, you know, act in a way that leads to one of your colleagues being fired after years and years with the company, are you going to stick your neck out for that same operation when something else comes up? Probably not. So it's, it, like I say, it's been a lot of factors, a lot of time. Um, the rating side, it doesn't make sense. The fact that people liked her, it doesn't make sense. The switch from someone with long uh, experience in, in in covering foreign operations and wars uh, to Omar Sachidino, who's a nice guy. I've worked alongside of him, just like I worked alongside Lisa Laflamme in the field. It doesn't make sense. He he doesn't have her level of experience. But there's a lot that we just don't know about what was going on behind closed doors. And when you realize that she announced it herself on social media, there was no goodbye. Part of that tells me it was a very acrimonious split. Um, mm -hmm. that that's the reason the split happened in the way it did. And, and whether you like Lisa Laflamme or didn't, I think most people would say, look, after 35 years, she deserved more than that. Well, how bad were things that the split happened in the way that it did? My guess is pretty bad on all sides.
And this doesn't happen very often in Canadian media. I mean, we for starters, we don't have a plethora of broadcasters in the first place. So, it, so when something like this does happen, we take note. When it happened with Wendy Mesley at CBC, I think a couple of years ago now, we stood up and we took note because, again, it is not something that happens very often. Now, of course, very, very different circumstances within the CBC and, and Wendy Mesley. But again, another long-serving anchor journalist who had been there for a very, very long time, not really accorded that opportunity to say goodbye to the viewers. Lisa Laflamme, uh, you know, has been coming into our homes for, for so long. Canadians are familiar with her. Mm. Like you said, you do not get in Canadian broadcasting 1.2 million viewers a night you know crushing the competition if we can even call it that on a regular basis but so there's a familiarity with her she wasn't accorded that opportunity to say goodbye to her her supporters or viewers um you know there's lots of uh, suggestions that you know lloyd robertson who is you know one of the latest greatest um in terms of that newsreader uh era you know, he got to stay till 77. So there's a, there's accusations that, that this is, they're being very sexist against her. This is unfair. Um, and there's kernels of truth to that. But at the end of the day, you and I don't know what was going on in those Bell executive offices. We don't know um, what those discussions were, what this proverbial final straw was in order to, to make such a significant move, to take away your your signature face of your network on the flagship operation. Um, and I don't think that we're ever going to know, Brian. And so all of the speculation is interesting. But what's fascinating to me, too, is all the camps that are lining up. And you're hearing from them, current employees, former employees. You see them on social media talking about how poorly others have been treated in the past. So let's move this forward. Where does this go from here? Well, September 5th, Omar Sachedina takes over of the TV network newscast that has been number one for decades. The interesting part will be, does he keep it there? You know, there was a, a period when global uh, national news heavily competed with CTV. We're going back uh, about a decade now. Uh, they changed anchors from Kevin Newman. Uh, he left. Donna Friesen kept the numbers up for a while, but they haven't been competitive with CTV in a long time. Um, so, you know, is that going to change? Um, people would look at Peter Mansbridge. By the way, CBC always third in a three-horse race. Peter Man Mansbridge oversaw uh, years of declining ratings, and then they went to a four-person anchor. I think they're back to one now. Um, and, and that confused the audience, and they didn't like it. So these wholesale changes can have... Uh, a dramatic change in viewership behavior. Um, I, I feel bad for Sachedini. He was away in vacation uh, when, when they announced this. He wasn't planning it, and he got told, get to a studio and speak to the, the affiliates quickly. Uh, he's been thrown into an awful situation uh, of having to defend what was obviously a bad PR move by, by Bell and how they handled it. Uh, will he be able to, to keep it at that 1 to 1 1.2? You know, on, on a down day, it's still 875,000 people watching. Um, that's a down day in the summer. Those are significant numbers. He has to find a way to keep it up there. If not, maybe Canadian uh, news viewing uh, habits change dramatically, and, and maybe they start watching something else or not watching TV news at all. I think that there is so much more information that we're going to find out over the course of the coming days and, and weeks. But ultimately, this is one of those sorts of Canadian media stories that has everybody talking. Log on to Facebook and Twitter. Let us know what you think. And go to torontosun.com and hit that subscribe button to support the great journalism that we're doing.